PC Master here. I had a customer contact me today who was complaining of inconsistent starting, some other issues with uh, vehicle starting. It wouldn't start when warm. Um, so what I figured I'd do, I, would, I figured I'd take his log and his map and uh, just walk through it for everyone to kind of see what I saw when I looked at his map because there are a few pitfalls you can fall in as far as configuring engine start settings. Uh, so I kind of wanted to use this as an example and use the information he'd sent to make it a little easier for folks that aren't uh, intimately familiar with the software yet. Uh, so what I pulled up, pulled up his engine start cranking fuel table, uh, his engine start parameters, his injector calibration, um, which are the, the latency values or dead time for the injectors. Uh, I've got this information up because it's all relevant for what we're looking at here. So I've got the log menu open, I pulled up just the ignition preset. And what we've got, you can see that, you know, the car's not running right now. If you look at the RPM trace, it goes from you know, zero over here, it goes up to, you know, 180, 190 RPM, which shows that the engine is being uh, turned by the starter. Um, the first thing I noticed is that he's got 22 degrees of ignition timing in it while cranking, which that's a lot. So the engine's turning it, I'm not even 200 RPM. Um, you really don't need that much ignition timing. The 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 more time you, you give it before top dead center in terms of ignition timing at that low an RPM, um, it's really not working for you. It's kind of working against you. So it's such a low RPM. Um, I'm usually going to start around 10, maybe 15 degrees with most engines. Um, so we're going to give him 10 degrees there uh, and see if that doesn't help the cranking situation. So that's the first thing I saw. The other thing I saw is that this box is not checked, the, the use injectors calibration. So if you look at um, this table here, this is the, the injector pulse width or you know, how long that injector channel is going to be triggered every time the ECU tells an injector to open up. Um, so two and a half milliseconds isn't a whole lot. He's running larger injectors, like a thousand cc. Uh, but if you look down at the actual injector pulse width channel, let me pull that up. What I see here is that it's commanding exactly two and a half milliseconds, which I, struck me as kind of odd because um, usually there's a latency value that's applied, which that's because he didn't check this box. So when you check the use injectors calibration box, uh, that means that while cranking, the ECU applies the time correction for the injector latency, which on early versions of the firmware that wasn't available. That's why it's a checkbox and not by default. Uh, but you want to make sure you've got that checked. Another thing I noticed is that it's flat all the way across the board, which is not correct. So at lower temperatures, it's harder to vaporize fuel. Uh, so on a cold engine, that's why we give it more fuel, is because it, it takes heat to vaporize fuel. So if you got a cold engine, uh, that fuel is not going to vaporize easily. Uh, so it should never be a straight line like this. Uh, another thing he's got, batch all injectors checked. That means the injectors fire every time you have an ignition event. So for two crank revolutions, so all four full strokes, uh, or four cycles, uh, it's going to be firing the injectors. So I, I'm, I'm not going to do that with injectors as large as he has. I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck that. Prime pulse is something else. You can read all about that in this menu. Uh, prime pulse basically fires off the injectors as soon as it sees any movement on the crank position sensor, which that's fine. So let me see what he's got as far as a prime pulse, uh, which he's got very little. It's, it's not even, a, yeah, it's about a millisecond. So yeah, we could bump that up to, to two maybe and see what that does. Uh, again, you can raise that at lower temperatures. Uh, since that's not our primary table, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, what I want to do here, though, is is make this look a little more reasonable. So we'll drop it to, and this is going to take some experimentation. I'm just kind of guessing with raw values here. Uh, but you definitely need it to look like a curve. So what I'm going to do here is use some of the, the tools we have in the software, interpolate horizontally. So it means you're going to smooth, you know, basically a linear transition between these cells, or you can take uh, the equalize tool, which when you right click on a bunch of cells, it just evens out the transitions. Uh, so that way, you know, lower temps is going to get more fuel. When it's really, really, really cold out, obviously it's going to be hard to vaporize fuel. Uh, so we're going to give him that to start with. That and using the injectors calibration, that's going to help. Um, but looking down here, just to see what we're looking at with the uh, log, one thing to note is that you know, it's a little inconsistent with synchronization here. It's a variable valve timing motor, uh, so it's not too you know bizarre to see that at 200 RPM it's not 100% synced yet. You know, synchronized here, but it's always a good idea to check and make sure that the ECU is 
seeing what it should be seeing. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up an interesting little channel here, which is the uh, Sparks Executed channel. So let me drop out Injectors Pulse Width. So this is the best way to check if the ECU is happy, if it's seeing the signals it needs to see. If you look at this, it starts and it's counting the number of ignition events. So you can see as it ramps up and the ECU is firing the ignition system. Um, so once it's got fuel, I mean, it should have started here and it definitely should have started here. Um, even right here, it was starting to, to synchronize. So that's something to pay attention to. What we can also do to help them out is to allow the engine to start without uh, ignition synchronization. So since this, uh, let's see, let me check his ignition setup and make sure I'm not lying to you. Okay, so he's got six individual coils on this motor. It's a VVTi 1JZ or 2JZ, uh, if I remember correctly. And what we can do is set it up to where he can actually start the engine without cam sync. And you can only do this when you have a primary trigger that's not just an equally spaced number of teeth. So on this motor, it's going to be a 36 minus 2, uh, which means it it's actually got 34 teeth, but it's as if it had 36, two, 36 teeth and two were missing. So it knows where top dead center is. It can look at that without relying on a second signal. It still needs a second signal to know if it's on the compression or the combustion stroke, but that's a, a separate matter. So what I'm gonna do is uh, select something here. Looks like this might have been saved in an early enough firmware that it's not available, but there is a checkbox that should be in the secondary trigger menu. Oh, I just checked it. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm a little lightheaded this afternoon. So I'm going to enable sync without cam sync, which means that we can start firing off the ignition outputs before it's completely synchronized. Yeah, that's going strictly off of the um, primary trigger. And so what I'll do here is while cranking, I'm going to match up the uh, ignition outputs. Which, now I can't remember where I put those. But anyway, so for ignition event one, you'd say we're going to fire both cylinders one and six, right? You're going to match up the two cylinders that are at top dead center. Uh, so that's for ignition event one. For two, you'd pick the two cylinders that are top dead center. Uh, and you do that for all six ignition events. Once you've done that, then it'll start firing the ignition and before the secondary signal is completely sorted out. So you can start faster. Uh, you know, he had no problems with the trigger while it was running. I could pull up another log and show you that, but he had no trigger issues once it was actually at running RPM. So this is just an easy way to get it to start a little faster and uh, make sure that even in cold temps when cranking speeds are a little bit slower, if the battery voltage is a little low, you're not going to have any issues starting the car. So that's uh, kind of the basic rundown. I hope that's been useful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and we'll try to make these videos a lot more often, and we'll just keep running with it. Thank you for watching.